Hello everyone, I'm RM2K Dev and welcome to the first vlog in my series on polishing your video games. Um, so the first thing I want to let you know is that I'm going to be using Game Maker for these experiments uh, simply so that we can rapidly prototype the ideas but the core concepts we're going to be using here are easily applied to any language, game, engine, whatever you're using, this should work fine. Um, secondly, I just want to let you know that I haven't planned these videos so what I'm going to say in them um, is not scripted, um, I'm just going to wing it. Uh, I have got an idea of what I'm going to go over and cover in each lesson, but there's not really any script um, per se. So let's get started. Um, so the first thing I've got here is I've just got a little game. It's um, nothing too special. It's basically just a sprite on the screen. And when you click, he will move in that direction. Um, he also aims himself to look directly at the mouse. Um, this could be the, the basis of, say, a top-down shooting game, uh, your zombies coming from everywhere, I don't know, something like that. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is anti-aliasing on the sprites. Um, by default, a lot of game engines will automatically apply an anti-aliasing algorithm to your game. Now, uh, in some cases when you're dealing with uh, textures um, that have perspective, this could look pretty good, or in 3D games this often helps to smooth out a lot of jagged edges, but when you're working with a 2D game you often want to keep those uh, edges sharp and crisp or else you end up with basically what I have on the screen now um, a blurry mess so make sure you disable anti-aliasing if you're building a 2d game um, unless you want that sort of look but I don't think you do so we disable that for now um, the second thing that you should probably know is keeping your scales in intervals of two uh, so for example if you have a 32 by 32 sprite uh, you will want to make sure that sprite remains in an interval of 2. So you could multiply that by 2 and get 64 by 64 pixels. Um, basically what this means is that every pixel now occupies 2 pixels. Um, whereas before every pixel would occupy 1 pixel. So this is a perfect scale ratio. Um, if you apply something else, like say 48 by 48 pixels, which is what I had on before, um, the results could be quite sketchy and it may or may not work. Um, <clears throat> so I've got an example to show you for that. Um, what I've got here is basically a two pixel image. Uh, I believe it's five pixels tall. I've created a black line and a red line. Now if we resize this image by say an odd number, let's make it uh, one of seven. What you're gonna see is that Originally we had two pixels, um, one color on each side. What you'll see here is, uh, if I just choose another color real quick, just to demonstrate this, we now have three pixels of red and what, four pixels of black. Now what's happened here is because we resized the image in an odd interval rather than a multiple of two, um, in order to compensate for the extra space that's being created in that image, one of the pixels has been expanded to take over one of the colors. Um, it might not look so obvious at first, but it could be a problem when you're resizing images at runtime in your game. Um, you'll end up with some strange artifacts when they rotate. Um, jagged edges would be will be created as the image rotates and things like that. So just make sure you keep your um, scaling in multiples of two to whatever that image was <clears throat> excuse me okay so now let's actually begin um, polishing this game's input um, so it's not too bad at the moment basically I'm just using the inbuilt physics engine because it was just quick and easy to get up and running um, so what I'm gonna do is the first thing maybe let's um, if you have a physics engine, you can apply some linear dampening. If you don't have a physics engine, you could just um, basically slow the character down um, as it moves. So, so we move for a short amount of time, and when we stop applying a movement, the character just slows down. Um, he slows down to a stop, but he doesn't just stop instantly. Because if you stop instantly, it it looks abrupt and short, and it's not very good. Um, so, what can we do next? The next thing, so th this, I should probably mention that this video is going to be focused on the input, um, polishing your inputs of the of the game. Uh, so what I've got to show you guys 
is a couple of ways that we could polish the input of this character. Um, for the moment, you can ignore everything below here, and you can ignore everything above here. So really, we're just focusing on this section of code in the middle here. Um, basically, that section of code deals with the mouse look that we have here. Okay, so we want to make that look a little bit nicer. That's a little bit too, um, too abrupt, I think. It happens instantly, and it doesn't. It just doesn't seem to be smooth. Okay, I have no idea what that sound was. Um, right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to apply this mathematical process called LERP. Um, now that stands for linear interpolation. Basically, what that means is that we're going to go from a value to another value, and each time we take a step towards that value we're going to increase by a defined interval. So in this example, what, I'm, what, I was what I was originally doing was I was setting the rotation of the object to be exactly pointing towards the angle of the mouse. Um, so that's too abrupt. So let's, let's interpolate that. So basically, if we apply the linear interpolation algorithm to this, we basically say that we want the rotation to be equal now this is the lerp function. It takes two parameters and an amount. And if you don't have a lerp function in the language you're using, um, you can just go to Google and type in lerp, um, lerp interpolation. And basically what that will give you is a link to Wikipedia that will explain how that works. And I've just pulled that up now so we can see how it works. It's a lot of math, um, but the actual implementation of it is really simple. You can find a code-based example anywhere on the internet. Um, but most languages nowadays have a lerp function in their math library. Um, so what we're doing is basically we're going from whatever the rotation was to the rotation that we want, and we want to get there in steps of 0 0.1. So this should look a little bit nicer. Now, did you see that when it started? It, it sort of... Um, chased the mouse like it's doing now. So now it's not as instant as it was. This gives us quite a nice little, a much nicer and a nice smoother um, movement. Now you see there is one issue with this and it's the fact that we're dealing with angles. Um, angles, when they reach 360 degrees, they obviously go back to zero and that's what's happening here. But it doesn't know that it can just increase by a value of one and instantly make it there. So I have another function here to show you. Um, and this is another way of applying the lerp method. Um, basically, we're going to use a function called angle difference. Now this takes in two angles and it will return you the difference in degrees between those angles. So this time, instead of just setting it equal to this, we want to add it to this. So we want to say the rotation is going to be whatever it was plus this function here, okay? So we get the difference of the angle from the initial rotation to the rotation we want, and then we multiply that answer by 0 0.1, and this is just the speed factor. Um, this could be 0 0.2, this could be 0 0.3. Um, a value of one would be instantaneous. So as you go down towards zero, it gets slower and slower and slower, giving you a nice gradual effect. Um, and so basically, if we have a look at this, now what we have is a perfectly smooth Perfectly, move, perfectly smooth and correct rotating input mechanism. And that, um, I think that looks a lot better than what we originally had. Definitely looks a lot better than what we originally had. One other thing I'll just do quickly, just for demonstration purpose, is to get rid of my scaling. Just so that it has a bit more... Uh, there we go. So now you can see when I stop, it has this nice sort of catch up effect where it catches up to where I was. It slows down nicely, it rotates much more smoothly, it's not so abrupt. Um, and this is just one step you can take towards polishing your inputs. Okay, so um, good luck implementing that into your games and thanks for watching.